I already don't like this. Yo. What are we doing? We are packing up. We're gonna go do some spring camping up in Little Cottonwood and do some skiing. So, yeah, just right up there, close to home. You know, it's the end of the winter and uh, we're both back and so, we're gonna do a little bros trip, just you and me. Bros trip. Bros trip. <laughs> I just got back from Iceland uh, like two days ago. So I took clothes out of the laundry this morning and packing in this bag now. I have no idea what day it is. terrible. <laughs> so the whole idea was we were going to go out to a part of Little Cottonwood Canyon that's hard to get to. And so we thought the best way to do that would be to go out and go camp. And then the next day we could ski a bunch of lines without having to walk in an extra two, two and a half hours. It's going to be a long day. Oh my. hot. Super hot. To get to Hogum, it's a long way. Once the trail splits, you head up into Red Pine and then Maybird and then Hogum is the next drainage down. Oh and we decided to start at about noon. So it was the hottest part of the day. It was probably like 70 degrees out and it was just a hot slog. Cold. Oh. First turns of the trip. So this is kind of what I thought Hogan was to like there. Turns out there's like all oh, this crazy. <laughs> Camping. So once we got camp set up. Uh, we decided to go ski something. I was too tired to go ski anything too big, but um, there was a line like right above camp. We decided to just kind of walk up and get our bearings a bit. And once we got up there, we got service. And that's when we learned that it was gonna dump that night. Just found out it's gonna snow tonight. So, That'll make the conditions, and then it's gonna get hot tomorrow. My legs are so tired. <laughs> pretty good, pretty good corn though, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Terrible skiing. Terrible skiing. Home sweet home. It's uh, variable conditions. Uh, well, actually, it's not very variable. It's like pretty, uh, it's just kind of, sh it's, it's pretty shit. It's pretty consistently shitty right now, at least from what we saw. So hopefully when we get into something a little steeper, maybe into a little coolie or something, it'll be a little bit better. But um, yeah, I mean, right now we wanted to come up here and ski corn in the sun and we're skiing windblown, crusty mank, so, you know, it's just kind of what you, you know, it's, just, it's what we got. So, it's gonna be fun. Anyway, bros trip, bros trip. Bros trip. Morning. Morning. Got a little problem here. Damn, you wanna see your boot or my boot first? <laughs> Let's see my boot. <laughs> oh no.
<laughs> oh my god, dude. <laughs> what the f Yeah, that's full. Did you sleep last night? Not at all. Yeah, me neither. Not at all. I slept for like an hour, maybe. Not at all. I was just up. Like, <laughs> listening to the wind. There's like four inches there. Like three feet over there. A foot over there. Yeah, I guess the big question is like... One, how good the powder ski it is. Uh-huh. Like what the wind did to it. And then what's gonna happen to all this if it does get sunny. If the sun comes out and it turns to mank and we're, there's a foot of snow, like to get home, we gotta go up and over that small pass. It's not that small. If it does get sunny, it's gonna be a little sketchy and it's gonna turn I don't to know bush. what yeah, like I don't know what we'd ski if it got sunny. We're probably not gonna ski any of this stuff in Hogum. It's like just probably too sketchy right now. So if we go back over the pass into Maybird, we can maybe ski some pow. Right. At least. Um, and then we wouldn't be coming back here. No, so, so we could pack up. Pack up anyway. Let's do it. Too uh, small pass. It's too small pass. All right. Now hopefully some powder skiing on the other side. Then. Yeah. Once we got into Maybird, we found some good snow for about five minutes until the sun, as soon as the sun hit it, it just turned to like sticky grossness. Um, so, I mean, that's the risk you run trying to ski this late in the year. I mean, there's nothing you can do. You can't control the weather. Um, you know, you can't control the snow. So it's just constantly adjusting. And, you know, unfortunately, like, we got skunked and yeah, it sucks to carry all your stuff out there and then just have to literally carry it all back. That was hard. Yeah, it was. We didn't know if we'd get a chance to come out again um, or if that was it. We are going up to, we're driving up Little Cottonwood and then we're gonna go walk up to Hogum, past where we were camping the other day with way lighter packs and we're gonna have a last great hurrah ski day. The goal is to get up into Hogum and ski at least a few runs that we've never skied before. I've not skied in Hogum really. One, be safe. Two, have fun. Three, ski some stuff that we've never skied before. And four, stay hydrated. So what did you do if you took a poop but you didn't get the wordle? I must have been doing something else when I was pooping. Let's go get him, huh? We watched the weather for a good corn cycle, but at this point it was getting way later in May and that brings a whole nother list of challenges, like no snow. So as cool of an idea that camping was to us, you know, we realized that maybe that was the way to do it back in the day when they had all this heavy stuff, but with our light gear, we can just go in and bust it out in one day and it'd be a whole lot easier.
a long one. It's really cool to ski the sliver and the hypodermic needle and get those out of the way early on. You know, it's something I've been looking at my entire life. From snowbird, you look across and it's like the most obvious ski lines in the in the canyon, really. So it was really cool to you know finally get a ski on. Okay, now we're heading back to Upper Hogum. We're gonna ski maybe that guy, or maybe that guy. Later in the day, we'll head out to that ridge and wrap around the back of the Pfeiffer horn and go home. Uh, we don't know what this is, but we spotted it uh, from our campsite, which was right there uh, a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, it looks sweet still, so it looks steeper and narrower than either two we just did, so it'll be cool. It's hard to tell how steep something is from the bottom, and I think we both thought it'd be the easiest kuar of the day, but once we got in there and started hiking, and it just kept tilting up. This, this is a steep one. I think from here it looks less scary than it did from there. There was a big rocky ice bulge right in the middle. It was by far the hardest Kuar of the day and the most intimidating for sure. I mean, it was a real no fall zone. I already don't like this. Take your time, get them in there. You got it. Oh, f I didn't like that one bit. Nice, take it home. Dear diary, I'm tired. I'm tired. We've reached the top of Hogum. It's, it's a hard one for Marcus. Should have skied toward more this winter. How we doing? There's the five. Here's Maybird. There he is. And I will be your flower if you will be the bee. 
And the boots are off. That feels good. That was uh, 11 hours in ski boots. Pulled overtime in ski boots today. There's just something about like spring skiing where you're walking in shoes and you know starting early in the dark and getting lost and you know it's a whole different thing and I don't know it's just really fun. Spring skiing is different. It just hits different, you know. <laughs> this is the Technica Peak Boot. It's for walking and skiing. It's for walking then skiing. This is the Technica Peak Boot. It'll certainly pique your interest for backcountry skiing. This is the Technica Peak Boot. It takes special bindings to run this bad boy. It looks like a shoe, but it fits like a glove. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Blizzard LT80. It comes in a carbon black, so you know it's light, because carbon's the best, and everybody knows it. Again, this is the Blizzard LT80. Yeah. <laughs>